Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Fish. By the way, if you're wondering how to get your questions into these videos, you have a much better chance through Discord. It's just way easier to see them compared to the YouTube comments, and you should just join our Discord server anyways because there's a lot of cool people over there. Okay, hit that like button. It massively helps out with the algorithm, and let's jump into your questions. Have you seen Bill and Ted face some music yet? If not, I recommend I enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, I've been waiting for this movie. I've wanted a sequel forever. Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey was one of my favorite movies as a kid. Such a bodacious film. So I was super hyped they were finally making a sequel. You know, like 29 years later, I'd pretty much given up hope. The trailer dropped. I was so pumped. I'll be super real with you. I wasn't that huge into Face the Music. What? No way! It did have moments for sure. I won't spoil any if you haven't seen it yet. But it kind of dragged for me. I don't know, maybe my goldfish, like, attention span is getting worse. Excellent adventure, bogus journey, they're classics. Face the music, definitely enjoyable, maybe not worth the $25 Amazon price tag. But what about you guys? Have you seen it? Did you like it as much as the other two? Tell me why I'm wrong. Any thoughts of Court as a brand? My first experience with Court was way back in the day. Uh, when I first started playing guitar, everyone that played guitar in middle school either had a Squire Bullet Strat, that was me, that was the cheapest one, or a Court X6. And you only had an X6 if you were a serious player, because it was double the price of a Bullet Strat. For context, it was 200 bucks new, but back then we didn't know any better. And comparatively, especially if you're 13 years old and you can get one for half the price, that's an expensive guitar. Now, since I've left China, I haven't seen Court nearly as much. They're at Nam, I guess. That's the only place I've really seen them. Like, I've never seen them at my local Sam Ash, Guitar Center, anything like that. My general impression of them recently is good guitars, terrible marketing, especially when it comes to social media. But there's kind of a reason for that. Port's main business is that they operate factories that a lot of your favorite import guitars come from. Especially if we're talking made in Indonesia, chances are it's Court. They do GNL, Ibanez, PRS SE, Jackson, I think and like a ton of others. But Court is their house brand and that's why the prices are so good compared to models with similar specs from any of the big name brands. And so they don't put as much into advertising their own brand since it competes directly with a lot of their clients, which is another point that I'll get into. A byproduct of being the house brand for a factory seems to be that they lack personality or any sort of obvious defined identity. And you can see a lot of court brand guitars take features and design elements from guitars that they make for other brands. Their metal ones in particular seem suspiciously Ibanez-esque, for example. So I'm not super interested in doing a bunch of court videos that lack of identity is actually pretty off-putting for me, but I would be down to do one if only so I've got some sort of court content on the channel to cover the brand. Because again, the prices for the specs are very good and value for money is what I try to cover here. Like the KX500 etched might be kind of cool. Mahogany body, ash blasted top, bolt-on five-piece maple purple heart neck, Makassar Ebony Fingerboard, Fishman Fluence Modern Humbuckers, goes for $749 US. Money. That's not bad at all. In fact, that's really good. But for having such a cool top, you can't tell me that this isn't a very generic looking metal guitar. You know, slap Jackson on the headstock, I'd believe it. But that's just me. What about you? Have you heard of Court before? What do you think of the brands or the guitars? And yeah, do you want to see a demo? Let me know in the comments. Did you see the new Solar Single Cuts? I mean, artists? Now, if you want to talk about a brand with an identity, though, look at Solar. Even in the very crowded metal guitar category, when you see a Solar, you know it's a Solar. Completely, unapologetically, unadulterated metal. I've talked about it before, advantages of a small company. They're quick, they're incredibly mobile, they've always got new models coming out. Case in point, the new Artist series. Now the idea behind the Artist is that they're technically not signature models, they're just spec'd out for what Ola would personally use right now if you were playing live gigs and going on tour. And it seems like at the moment he's most into what he started with the AB series, because these are an even more metal extension on that theme. What I mean by that is that the original AB series had the roasted maple bolt on necks with stainless steel frets, Duncan Solar humbucker in the bridge, dual rails in the neck, but for the most part the colors were brighter. The guitars were a little calmer and more mellow compared to the rest of the line. The new ones, Solar's like <laughs> that, full power to the weapon systems. Black ash blasted bodies, there's an AB 1.6, an AB 1.7, and a V 1.6R. Black Solar logo on the 12th fret, all equipped with Evertunes. Usually V's and pointy ass guitars don't interest me in the slightest love. <laughs> that is a nice guitar. Set through roasted maple, ash blasted body, single sized humbucker in the neck, and an Evertune. Yes, 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 yes. I constantly gush about it, probably to the point of being very annoying, but I really, really like what Solar's doing. They've got one goal when it comes to product, making a kick-ass metal guitar and they don't try to 
pretend to be anything else. They've got proven designs and they continually make these small tweaks which allows them to keep the lineup fresh without coming with brand new designs from scratch all the time. I don't even like pointing guitars, but I'm always on the website. Like, I'm just curious to see what's new. It's just amazing to see what they've accomplished in such a short period. Yeah, I'm pretty curious. Since they don't have a US distributor and most of my audience is in the US, how many of you have actually played one and what did you think? And if you haven't played one, are you thinking of picking one up sight unseen? I'd love to know your thoughts. Before we get into the next question, I wanna give a huge shout out to Raymond Barreras and the rest of the amazing patrons for making what I do possible. It's really allowing me to focus more on what you guys wanna see rather than just on sponsorships. If you wanna directly support what I do as well and get bonus perks like MP3s and tabs to all the demo tracks, link is in the cards. Again, obviously no pressure. I appreciate you guys just being here. All right, into the next question. 10 View Club, and I definitely feel you on the Blackjack series, but what are your thoughts on the just announced Omen Elites? I'm stoked for those. Also, as a lefty, I feel ultimately betrayed this year by Schechter. Condolences. Yeah, you lefties have it rough. That's why I'm trying to convince Harley Benton to have more of their models at launch available for lefties in all the same colors as the right-handed versions or at least the models that I'm involved with. If nothing else, it'd be nice to have you guys join in on the hype when it comes to new models, seeing as you tend to get shafted everywhere else. But yeah, the brand new Schecter Omen Elites. There are three different models in three different colors, an Elite 6 for $4.99, an Elite 6 with a Floyd Special for $5.49, and an Elite 7 also for $5.49. All of them come in your choice of either Black Cherry Burst, Blue Burst, and the so ugly, it's kind of cool, Charcoal. I'm usually a big fan of Burl, but I don't know, this one's kind of ugly, even for me. Now, it should be noted that this is not your typical Floyd special. It's what Schechter calls a hot rod. Basically, Schechter does this thing where they replace all the key moving parts with stainless steel. It's the same bridge on the Banshee GT I've been playing around with. Now, I will say the setup was unusually annoying, even for a Floyd. It would just get stuck. It wouldn't move, even when I adjusted the tension screws. Then, all of a sudden, it would travel a ton. It was super unpredictable. But since I've gotten it working, it's actually been quite stable. Uh, especially given that it's a Floyd special. Back to the Omens though, for specs, we've got a mahogany body, a bolt-on maple neck, and a rosewood fingerboard with 24 extra jumbo frets. The top is gloss for that extra shine, then the back is satin, which should help with feel and playability. Schecters then included their own proprietary diamond heretic pickups. I assume with a name like that, they're low output PAFs, not for metal at all. They've also got Schecters' new speed knobs with the grooved rubber strip for extra grip and adjustment accuracy. Big fan of that. Again, it doesn't look like lefties have been invited to this party, at least not yet. It would really surprise me if there aren't lefty versions eventually, since the Omen series generally seems to offer a decent lefty selection, at least when we consider the other models. Now, is it just me, or in 2020 is Schecter just releasing new series after new series after new series? Yeah, we've got some releases from other brands, but while everybody else is struggling with back orders and production capacity and, you know, taking it a bit calm, Schecter's all like Silver Mountains, Blackjacks, New Solo 2 Custom, Banshee Mox, Omens. Or maybe it's just because this is the first year I've paid a lot of attention to Schecter. Is it always like this? But yeah, anyways, I'm still working on two Schecter demos that should be out next couple of weeks or so. You know how it is with this channel. I'm trying. You get it when you get it. But I have been talking to Schecter about one of the Blackjacks. Should I add the Omens to the list as well? I'll be honest with you, the new Omen Elites are probably my least favorite from the recently released series. They just don't get me that excited. Maybe it's the Rosewood Fingerboard. But these do look like great bang for buck at about $500, so it might be cool to document on video what Schecter is capable of at this more affordable price point. Those are just my initial thoughts. Let me know what you think and whether you wanna see a demo. Did you see the Fender American Professional 2 leak? You know what? I loved the American Professional ones. I guess that's what we'll call them now. The original American Professionals that launched in 2017. That was like the first proper American Strat that I played and I was just floored by the quality. $1,400 and it was just a phenomenal player. Like just unreal. 1400 bucks is by no means a small amount of money, but it was just so good that in a way, even at that price point, it was still kind of a bargain. Well, thanks to distributor listings, the American Professional 2 series has leaked. Interesting, they don't usually do numbers. It's usually a completely different name. But anyways, was the leak accidental? Was it tactical to build hype? Was it an inside job? 
I'll let you decide. So we don't have the complete specs yet, but we do have a few juicy details. So far, only the Stratocaster, Telecaster, and Telecaster Deluxe are confirmed. Colors include like a silver burst, a surf green, natural, a blue that's almost too bright, and my absolute favorite, Dark Knight. Good God, Dark Knight looks cool. There are upgraded VMod 2 pickups for the Strats, which are supposed to be the most articulate yet. I mean, aren't they always though? There's also a new two-point trem with a cold rolled steel block. The leaks show a list price of $14.99, which is a $50 increase on the current lineup. So it'll be interesting to see if the new pickups and the upgraded two-point trem are worth the additional cost. Another interesting note, Swamp Ash is leaving the lineup as Fender said it would due to scarcity and associated price increases. And instead, we're getting Roasted Pine. That's interesting. It should be a fairly heated debate amongst the cork sniffers. I've never played a guitar with Roasted Pine as the body material before, but I trust the professionals over at Fender enough to know what they're doing. And I assume it'll feel and sound similar to Swamp Ash. I will miss that signature highly defined grain though. So yeah, look out for the real announcement sometime soon. That is if it hasn't already gone up in the time it's taken to edit this video. You know how this channel is, it's like the last place on the internet for breaking guitar news. But yeah, from what we know so far, what are your thoughts on the American Professional 2s? Again, the American Professional Strat was just one of the best guitars I've played at that price point, and I'm excited to see the continued evolution of the line, but that's just me. Personally, I'm loving that Dark Knight color, but this might be a great time to pick up a Swamp Ash American Professional Telly from the original lineup, I mean. Once the 2s release, you know retailers are gonna try to offload the old ones at blow up prices. And the way things are going, this might might be one of the last times you'll be able to get a new American Fender made of Swamp Ash at under two grand. But yeah, Silver Burst or a Dark Knight Telecaster Deluxe with that big ol' headstock, so cool. Speaking of Telecaster Deluxes, I did reach out to Fender about the Daphne Blue Nitro Roadworn Ventera. Unfortunately, still haven't heard back. Understandable, everyone's so busy right now. So if there's a Fender demo on the channel soon, would you prefer a 1499 American Professional 2 or a 1099 Ventera Road War. Or maybe both. Compare the new with the new, but at different price points. See how they stack up against each other in terms of tone and overall build quality. Yeah, let me know what you think, what you want to see. Obviously, every comment helps. That way I can get exactly what you want up on the channel. Oh my god, so my music recommendation this week is Devil's Den by October Ends. I cannot recommend this song enough. It's legitimately one of the best songs I've heard all year. Well, technically it came out last year, but whatever. Amazing heavy riffs, big catchy chorus. It's been stuck in my head all week. October ends. Remember the name. They're going to be big. I'll leave a link below. Um, definitely go check it out. And now it's time to hear from yet another adoring fan. It's the high praise of the week. And actually this is the first one I've gotten through Facebook. You suck! Worst videos and opinions ever! You know, my perception of Canadians is that they're like the friendliest people ever. So good for you. Breaking stereotypes. You go, girl. And that'll do it for this week's episode of Ask a Fish. If you enjoyed it, do me a favor and hit that like button. Leave your thoughts and your questions on anything down below. If you're new around here, hit that subscribe button. You can also hit the bell for all notifications. Sometimes YouTube might let you know when I upload a new video. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.